Mel Tucker didn't waste any time getting Michigan State back to the top of the Big Ten East. And that a success should have you excited if you're a Spartans fan. Because when you look at where they used to be in the last couple of years, it, it wasn't looking really good. And Mel Tucker came in and said, hey, we're turning this around now. We're not wasting any time. We're not going to give teams a chance to to capitalize on our struggles. We are going to make some noise. We are going to hit the recruiting trail hard. And you see the results already. You saw it last year, thanks to a couple guys. And now with the transfer portal and the recruiting trail, this is a staff that has Michigan State believing that they deserve to win a Big Ten championship within the next few years. I've been a fan of Xavier Henderson for a while now, and it's easy to see when you look at his production. This is a guy who runs all over the field. He does everything for this defense. He, let, you know, he had 96 tackles last year, 10 tackles for loss, 3 sacks, 2 passes defended, 1 interception. He literally does everything. He's that Swiss Army knife for this defense, a guy that is not afraid to initiate contact. He is not afraid to fill the gap, to fill the alley, and... Th- send a message with his physical play. And that's something that's going to set the tone for a defense that's going to be extremely talented this year. It's going to be fun to see what Michigan State's able to do. And that maybe even help them take away some of that pressure on the offense to produce. This is a conference that has seen a number of teams take a step forward in terms of explosiveness, a couple within their own division. And a guy like Xavier Henderson is not only going to help in the run game, but he's also going to be able to help against some of these talented pass catchers that Michigan State's going to face on a weekly basis. I really wish Jalen Naylor would have returned, but getting Jaden Reed back after leading the team in receiving yards is a huge get for them. That's a huge player that's going to make a ton of big plays for them once again. Average 17.4 yards per catch. This dude was explosive. 10 touchdowns on 59 catches. That's something that is really exciting for this offense. And they added some players that we'll talk about later that are going to help make things a little bit better. But it was the passing game that really stepped up and made Michigan State a lot better than I think people were expecting. And when you look at when they had Kenneth Walker, he is obviously gone. So the rushing attack is going to be a question mark maybe this year. But I think the talent they have coming in is going to limit some of those concerns. But Jaden Reed is a guy who's going to lead the team once again in receiving. He just needs some guys to step up around him. Jacob Slade is an underrated defender for Michigan State. I don't think he gets the recognition he definitely deserves. This is a guy who, again, we talk about defensive tackles and how they don't get a ton of recognition because of the position they play. But Jacob Slade is a problem. And this is a guy who, one, he wears 64. So that's probably why he doesn't get a ton of attention because of the number that he wears. But this is a strong player who has a ton of power in his frame and a lot of times is doing more of the holding up one or two guys so that guys behind him can make plays. And that's something that's going to be huge for this defense once again. A front seven that's going to be super talented. Jacob Slade is a guy who could really stand out for them without having the production. Cal Halliday is an absolute menace to society. Mostly because this dude does not wear gloves when he plays linebacker. Now granted, gloves probably don't do a ton in terms of protecting you from major injuries. But they definitely keep those scrapes and bruises or those bumps because you are in the trenches battling with 300-pound offensive linemen and banging against a bunch of helmets with your hands. And it's just just crazy to see someone like him not wear gloves. So the fact that he stands out that way is just the beginning. This is a guy who's going to stand out in terms of production too. He is a natural playmaker, 96 tackles, 5 tackles for loss. He had two interceptions last year, too. I'm excited to see him play again. He is a very smart player who knows exactly where the football is going to go, and it's evident by his production. And this is going to be a front seven, like I said, that's super talented, and it's going to be exciting to see what they can do. Now that people know what they're about, they know what to expect, what can they do to repeat that success? Peyton Thorne was arguably the biggest reason for Michigan State's success last year. A big reason why they took a step forward before most anticipated. Over 3,200 yards with 27 touchdowns. Now you'd like to see him reduce the 10 interceptions that he threw. But this was really the coming out party for Peyton Thorne. And I think that he can get even better. 
that again, it was his first year. So he was still learning mostly as the season progressed and he still thrived. And it's really exciting to see this offense. I think Jaden Reed was the biggest beneficiary of Thorne's success. And Michigan State was a competitor in the Big Ten East competition because their passing offense was so much better. Now he returns after a year of experience under his belt, and that's going to be exciting to see how this offense can be even more explosive in year two as a starter for him. People kind of forget that Jarek Broussard was one of the best running backs in college football at one point at Colorado. And I think last year, the lack of success for the team kind of overshadowed his success. But this is still a very talented running back, one that is going to compete for the starting job here at Michigan State. I think people overlook him for the other guy that we'll talk about here. But this is someone who I really like as a, a competitor, someone who is going to be productive for this offense. And the rushing tech shouldn't take a step back because he's there. I think Chris Bogle has the chance to be arguably the biggest X factor on the defense. Now, this is a talented defense that doesn't necessarily need something to be good. They just need someone that can take them to be great. And Chris Bogle is a former four-star kid who has great size for the defensive end position. And again, this is a talented front seven that has a ton of experience. But I think that Chris Bogle's ceiling maybe is the highest of anybody that's on that front seven. And if he can take a step forward after being in a kind of crowded Florida defensive line, if he can stand out now that he gets a chance to be the starter, to be the guy, then I think that Michigan State's defense is going to just take a step forward as well. Mississippi State transfer Aaron Brule was maybe one of the bigger surprises. I, I was really kind of shocked to see him leave Mississippi State after a season in which he produced 53 tackles and eight tackles for loss. And I think maybe it's, well, really it's just Mississippi State's loss and Michigan State's gain because he's a guy who can step up. And even you look at the guys that they brought in with him, Jacoby Winman is another guy that could be on this list. But I think that when you're looking at who is most equipped to handle a transition like this, it's him. We talked about Xavier Henderson earlier, but Ronald Williams Jr. is going to face a lot of that competition we talked about in terms of pass catchers. And he's proven that he is ready for the task. He had eight passes defended last year, so teams definitely weren't shy about testing him. And he lived up to their to his team's expectations. They wanted him to potentially shut teams down. And at times he did that, and it's going to be really exciting to see what this secondary can do because they're going to face some really talented pass catchers, especially at Michigan, especially at Ohio State. That's going to be the biggest test. But even look at Penn State, even you're looking at Maryland. This is a Big Ten East that has a ton of talent at wide receiver, and Ronald Williams is going to have to prove that he's ready for that test. We talked about the running backs earlier. Jalen Berger comes in from Wisconsin. I think people expected him to be better at Wisconsin. And it, what things just obviously didn't work out. Now he gets a chance to take over for Kenneth Walker the third. He'll probably rotate with Jared Broussard, but this is an offense that can handle that, and they're going to go at a faster pace than we expected from the previous regime, and that's going to be really exciting. I think people are still very high on Jalen Berger, and a lot of people are picking him to be the starter, but at worst he's going to be in a rotation with a guy who's super talented, and that's going to be huge for this offense. This is a team that has the talent to compete in the Big Ten East. They just have to take a couple steps and maybe pull off a couple upsets in order to do that. But I like the talent that Mel Tucker is bringing to campus. I like the additions in the transfer portal, and the guys that they have returning have championship caliber attitudes, and this is a team to definitely pay attention to in 2022.